What's going on? I want to say thank you to everyone that bought training and thank you to the people who are about to buy training. And once again, shout out to the Nerd Tribe. Uh, I was on the internet and I saw another promoter, so you would speak. And on the Instagram, Rolls Royces, Lambos parked next to a private plane. And I consistently see this as a representation of what people with money, they do. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to go on record. And if you're offended, that's your business. Flying private without a valid business reason is completely stupid. It's completely stupid. And I consistently see people representing, because I, I don't understand. I don't know if this individual is actually flying private because one of the things that I see and I have people, I have friends who are quite wealthy. I have a friend worth, let's say half, 500 million. He has never chartered a private jet in his life. And this is someone who could do that type of stuff and not go broke. Yet I see people consistently doing things. We, we've had this conversation about the cars, like, you know, personal preference. If you have the money to buy a Rolls Royce, that's your business. It's not a car that I like. It's not a car that I like. And I'm consistently seeing these things pushed up like strip clubs. Uh, I don't go to strip clubs. To me, to me, a strip club is one of the biggest waste of money you could be it's it's right up there with flying private to me and you know i'm, I'm kind of thinking about starting the mail channel again i'm, I'm kind of thinking you know, i'm like today was a strategy day i did a lot of stuff um but i consistently see behavior on the internet of what rich people supposedly do but when I look in my circle of people I don't see that behavior I have a friend he doesn't care anything about cars he drives a Hyundai dude's worth about 30 million and I'm consistently seeing the misrepresentation of wealth I Heard that some rappers went to a strip club and dropped a million dollars. If you go back to ESPN's 30 for 30 broke, that's the type of behavior where you literally can make millions of dollars, tens or some people make hundreds of millions of dollars in their professional career. And when they retired, they didn't have no money. It was that type of behavior like I had a friend who loves strip clubs and I went to the strip club with him a few times because this was this is how I rolled. I would go strip club and I say, all right, I got a hundred bucks to spend. And once I spend my hundred bucks, I'm not spending any more money. I'm, I'm the cheap guy in the strip club. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the guy that strippers hate because I am just not going to give you all of this money for you. Uh, it's just it, it makes no sense to me but once again i will go into a little extra detail i can get my girlfriend to strip for me and we're gonna get to have sex it ain't gonna cost me nothing but that's me and i know for all of you who are talking about you can't get a girl that looks like a stripper um i have been in strip clubs and I have dated women that have looked better than strippers. So maybe you can't 
get a girl that looks like a stripper or has a nice body. That's not everyone's problem. That's your problem. And I consistently see in the black space. This is where I see it. Also, I, I will see it in the Forex space. I'll see it in the day trading space with white content producers. And, you know, I have been on a private jet. And it, I will say it's nice. I, no, I didn't pay for it. I was part of a group and someone knew someone that had a private jet. And as a favor to the person in the group, we got to fly the jet there and back. It was nice. I'm not going to I'm not going to front. It was nice. It was nice not having to go through security and all these other things. It was nice. I'm not going to front. It was nice. But to spend 40 to $60,000 to go somewhere that a $1,500 first class ticket will get me round trip. Um, you know, th this is one of the things because I'm getting ready to do get delve off into money management and th this this money management is key um you know if you are a person that's been able to start a business and get money congratulations you've done well however if at the end of your business career you don't have no money you you haven't done that well because um i am seeing especially um in the Airbnb space, I'm seeing a lot of people, a lot of people pile into these Airbnb business models, right? And people, real estate experts were saying that this Airbnb crash is coming because you have so many, and like literally, I am, I'm in Atlanta and I'm seeing it and there's a lot of people here in Atlanta who are pushing, getting into an Airbnb and they own, like I, I was watching this one guy and supposedly he had over a hundred Airbnbs at a minimum. That's a hundred thousand dollars a month just on rent. The expense structure of that was staggering because over a year, that's like one point two million dollars a year just in rent. If they're cash flowing, that's good. That's great, but. No, because once again, I don't really listen to people. I do my own research and I can I know for a fact that the Airbnb market is slowing down in Atlanta. I know this for a fact. Literally every day, someone who has an Airbnb property is throwing it on Zillow as a long term renter L rental every day. This is happening across Atlanta. So I know for a fact that the Airbnb um Thing is slowing down here in Atlanta. Can't speak for other locations, but I've done my research here in Atlanta. And I'm consistently seeing what I'm going to consider bad business. Um, the car rental business. The car rental business was a complete and other nightmare. And I was accurate in what I told you guys about the car business. I didn't lie. I was like, you know, because here, here's the thing. And, you know, for you folks who believe in karma, this right up your alley. If you personally know that a business model is not good and you're con consciously pushing that training. Um, I actually ran into someone who is a salesperson for an Amazon FBA thing. Never even heard of it. And he says, uh, as a company, we're doing about a million a month selling Airbnb, uh, uh, Amazon FBA. I was like, what? A million a month? He said, yeah. And I was like, how many success stories do you have? And he said, he said, honestly, not that many. So this company is selling training because uh, like, I already know since I have actually operated in this space. If you're starting Amazon FBA and you don't have twenty five to fifty thousand dollars, it's going to be hard. And that's just for one product. If you have multiple products, you're going to need that twenty five to fifty thousand for each product. And I was like, he was like, you know, he said, I made really good money, though. 
I make good money. He's like, there's nothing else that I know that I can do to make this type of money. So I'm kind of stuck. And what I am going, what I, what I, what I, what I see coming um, is a reckoning with all of these online content promoters i see a reckoning coming it's just a it's just simply a matter of time and i know that people who sell airbnb training there was a guy here on youtube his name was derek struggle he did not get the lambo until after he started selling airbnb training he did not get the the lambo before um I just feel that we're going to run into this reckoning with uh, Toro, Airbnb, Amazon FBA, and we've already run into a situation with trucking. A lot of, if you notice, you do not see the people promoting trucking the way that they were a few years ago. You don't see them because anyone, like number one, the price of a truck is extremely high and I feel like go ahead and look at your Facebook feeds and stuff and remember a few years ago you saw literally everyone was selling trucking courses I feel that's going to come for Amazon FBA I feel that's going to come for the Toro people and I feel that's going to come for the Airbnb people because part of money management like to me, once again, just going to the strip clubs, to me, it's just like literally taking the lighter out your pocket, flicking it and setting your money on fire. That's to me, to me, that's that's the whole point of strip clubs. Like I have I been to a strip club? Yeah. And well, once again, I'm I got a hundred bucks. And once that hundred bucks gone, I'm done. I'm just not going to keep throwing money at these women because they're dancing for me call me crazy i don't know but i feel that we're about to have a big reckoning in many many spaces because the stimulus economy is gone the stimulus economy is over and we're in a space where people are having to operate on real money, the money they make. And God forbid a credit crunch. Like this is what I, I think for people with bad credit, there's already a credit crunch. But I think going forward, the credit crunch is going to get worse. And right now you have people who are buying groceries and medicines on credit cards because they don't have the cash. Um, I just feel that a lot of people who went to these strip clubs, a lot of people following these um, less than ethical content promoters are going to look back a year from now and they're going to be, there's going to be a lot of regret. I think there's going to be a great reckoning, a lot of regret because I understand. I don't think there's anything wrong with selling online courses. I sell online courses. But I think there is something unsavory about selling a product that you know. Like, I was going to, even before I got in the car rental business, I was going to sell a car rental course. And after being in the business and seeing what a nightmare it was, there was no way in good conscience I could even, I couldn't do it. I'm just simply, you know, you saw the videos. And once again, you know, even after all of the headaches of setting up the uh, trading accounts, um, parts of me, it, my, my, my gut says just kind of stay away from trading because I listen. I watched a lot of trading videos and there's a girl by Humble Trader. Her name is Humble Trader. And she was talking about how she made twenty five thousand dollars in one day. And to her credit. She went into great detail. She had one million dollars 
invested in her trade to make twenty five thousand. I want you to, I want you to think about that, because this is one of the things that I consistently and I have known and I have um, understood that. You need a lot of money in your brokerage account. I know that there's a lot of people that will sell you the fantasy that you can turn twenty two thousand dollars into a hundred thousand dollars. Mm, no, but you know, I saw what she did. She outlined her trade. She bought six thousand shares of this one stock, which came up to a million dollars. So she has a very large trading account, and this is what I'm seeing with the institutional traders. You got a billion dollars to buy stock, and if it makes a five dollar move per share, and you're holding a million shares. You made five million dollars. And, you know, I haven't quite fully made up my mind, but I'm getting to that point because, you know, I, I, I there are people who are on YouTube who, who are, I think, honest people. They're honest about trading. They talk about their their wins and their losses. And I keep consistently hearing this one guy he keeps talking about he don't have enough money to make the trades or he doesn't have a money to, enough money to do this or that. And at one point he was talking about he has some issues with his credit. And I was just like, and this guy knows what he does. He knows what he's doing with trading. And because he doesn't have the capital to make the kind of trades he wants to make, he ain't making a lot of money. He's making maybe six figures. Which is good, you know. I don't know if he has a job or not, but, um, you know, I, I'm just serious. You know, like, like I said, today was a strategy day. I was sitting down. I was just thinking about a lot of stuff, and I was just sitting there, just thinking, like, I, you know, I, to me, I feel a lot of stuff is kind of like going to strip clubs. You know, uh, like I said, I last time I went to a strip club. I'm going to say it was eight or 10 years ago. And I went with a friend. And that is. Because, you know, for me, it just doesn't make sense. But once again, with money management, you know, the whole thing I keep seeing all across Instagram, all these people, they're parked outside a private jet. And honestly, there's nowhere that I have to go that I need to get there that fast or like I'll be at the airport. I'll be at the airport. Just call me crazy because, you know, even with fractional jet, it's still way expensive. One way. One way. And also, I just look at this crass consumption, this um this whole environment of people teaching people to make money using lifestyle as uh, a marketer. Tony the Closer said on Tasha K's uh, show that people weren't paying him any attention till he got the chain and the cars and the drip. And, um, if that's what it takes for well actually uh, that's not what it takes uh, I don't even have to say that because I'm not going to do that I'm not going to be doing the drip and all this other stuff uh, I've been able to make a lot of money selling it from a position of this is what you can do this is how you do it so I'm going to keep doing that I'm not going to get into this hyper hip hop, hyper flashy Mr. T starter chain presentation to sell some stuff. I'm not getting into it because I, I've seen so many things that are correct. I know people who became rich from just working hard and working in their businesses. They were not quote in the right rooms because I, I saw the craziest thing just hanging around rich people is going to make you rich uh that that would be false that would be false 
How do I know this? How many people in Hollywood hang around movie stars? How many people in the NFL hang around NFL players? How many people in the NBA hang around in a, in a NBA players who are not even close to rich? I think it is a false premise to say just hanging around rich people is going to be better than make you rich. No, no, that, 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 that has nothing to do with it. Now, networking and working with partnerships with people with money, yeah, that, that might make you rich, but just simply being in the room. But then again, I'm not a person with hero worship. I'm not a person who um, is amazed at someone who is wealthy. I am, I, I I don't have, um, I don't get starstruck. I actually ran into Marcus Allen in the airport and I gave him the head nod. He gave me the head nod. We kept it moving. Um, I can appreciate and respect people who had tremendous success in the area of life. I can do that. But I don't get spellbounded or starstruck by these people. I just don't. But, you know, the message is. You got to manage your money correctly. And I don't care how, you know, even millionaires need budgets. And I know that's something that a lot of people don't want to hear because the, the notion is that you make so much money, you just go, to, you just put it in the bag. Don't even look at the price. Just put it in the bag. And everyone who's living life like that is going broke. They're going broke, regardless of how much money they have coming in. They're going broke because, um, you know, I, I just consistently see this stuff and I'm getting ready to get into some deeper level of training. Um, I will tell you because I'm going to send an email, make some stuff out. It's going to be the uh, 10 year millionaire uh, plan. My goal is to help hundreds of people. Once again, hundreds, not thousands, but hundreds of people become millionaires in the next 10 years through entrepreneurship because that's the fastest way to get money. And if you know what you're doing, you make money in any environment. Apple stock is down, Walmart stock is down, Amazon stock is down, Tesla stock is down. Guess what? They still making money. They're still making money. And I'm going to really focus on pushing the message that you should become a business owner because, you know, um, honestly, I got a little jelly. I'm, I'm, I got a little jelly that someone can literally put up a trading video and get 100,000 views in a week. And I was just like, why are these videos doing so well? Because people are desperate for money. So these views get AdSense views or if their course is cheap enough, they get sales. But I want to come up with a different level of renaissance because, you know, I'm getting ready like today. Uh, I'm getting ready to start posting way more on B School for Hustlers and I'm getting ready to start posting way more on the corporate game. And today I, I got a sponsor for the corporate game. So I'm getting ready to really, really start focusing on entrepreneurship, building businesses and building wealth that way. Can you get rich in the stock market? Absolutely. But it's the slowest path. It's the slowest path. Can you get rich in real estate? Absolutely. But once again, I feel that a lot of people that are highly leveraged are about to have a reckoning in 2023. And, um, you know, uh, I got a friend who's in real estate and she and I were talking and she's like, she feels that there's going to be a bloodbath in real estate because she knows a lot of people just got into the real estate market. And she says they have no clue to what they're doing. She says they're spending they're spending too much money for these houses. She hasn't bought a house. I think. She recently got a house that's a disaster, but the house had foundation issues and the people who were in it had some medical issues. So she got a really, really good deal on it. And that's, that's how she buys. She does not buy rental ready property. She doesn't buy it. And she was telling me that, you know, once she gets this thing um, 
fixed the way she wants it, it's going to, she should be able to pay it off within a year or two. And then it'll be cash flowing quite nicely. And what I'm seeing is a lot of people are leading people astray in business because they don't want to be honest or like I ran across a girl, she got one of those awards. Because if you know this, you see a lot of these commercials where they have their click funnel awards because they're very proud of that. And um, I don't know about that because, you know, you know, it's 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 about to get real tight for a lot of people. I mean, real tight. Uh, I'm probably going to do an Airbnb apocalypse video because I feel based upon um, my own research, my own research, uh, the real estate trapper put up a video. There was another podcast that I came across. And because I have never started a business with credit or a loan, that's not even in my thought process. But a lot of people are getting into real estate with some extremely expensive financing. And so once again, that's what the leverage is about. I, I think the leverage is going to collapse in 2023. You're going to see a bunch of these Airbnbs on fire sale and you're going to see some go to foreclosure because people just jumped in because of this over this improper representation of business and real wealth. Because when I hear someone has an Airbnb empire and 150 doors and they're renting it, I instantly start calculating that rents six figures per month. Six figures per month. Uh, that is a high expense ratio business. I'm just sitting there like, you know, if everything's fine and they're all renting out and you're, you know, because I, I started calculating, I was like, because I know once again, the Airbnb market here in Atlanta is slowing down. And I was like, OK, so if they their bookings goes down and let's say they're making twice what their rent is, are they making twice? No, no, because you've, you've got rent, you've got Internet, you've got utilities, you might be spending one hundred and fifty 160,000 a month to make 30. That is scary. That is scary. And then the new training, I'm going to teach you the expense ratio because a lot of people are getting into these business models and they don't understand the numbers. You make your money when you buy, not when you sell. And a lot of people don't understand that concept. And a lot of people are, I think, in deep doo doo. They're just in deep doo doo because what I'm seeing, what's coming, what's about to happen, man. So I'll be talking about today is Halloween, boo, and uh, tomorrow I'll get into the new training and structure it because I'm making some structures. Because a lot of y'all like to go to my website and look around and be nosy. And then ask me questions about the website in the comment section. And if you notice, I never answer them. I just block you and delete your comments because what I have come to understand in all my years of being here on YouTube and selling stuff is people who are truly interested. They just buy. They just buy. They don't they don't have all these questions. They just buy. So in the future, there will be more buyers. There will be more people like that because. I am going to make a concentrated fo focus to reach out to reasonable people. Um, I got a video, $250,000 a year is life changing. It's life changing. Uh, for the average person who makes $30,000 to get to 250 in like say five years, that is life changing. And you know, I'm going to aim my content at practicality, in helping people, because that's how I got started. I didn't start off here. I started off with that first business and I got my bank account. And like, once again, I, I've been putting out these videos. Cash is not trash to a business person. To an entrepreneur, you need cash money in the bank. And all these people who are talking about cash is trash, 
they've been operating on the stock market for the last 12 years. And I, I came across a really good video and I posted it in the comments section. Do you understand that some companies that crash? I watched a video today that said some stocks that crashed in the dot-com era have never reached their highs. They've never returned. So the title of the video, stocks don't always come back. And I was just sitting there like, I'm just seeing so many things that um, are in line with the content, the messaging that I put out. Because I, I just knew that Airbnbs were in trouble. But once I got some, th th that podcast, and I put it in the comment, in the community section, uh, I, did not, I didn't understand that people were doing all this crazy stuff to get an Airbnb property. And one of the things I teach is not to over leverage yourself. And we're going to get into that because, man, this this leverage stuff is going to kill people. It's just going to kill people. I am not comfortable making a move or spending X amount of cash unless I have the cash in the bank. That's just one of my habits. And uh, I'm going to start teaching this stuff because what I feel in 2023, when this reckoning hits, when um, we get to where the rubber meets the road and all of this finessing and leverage stuff is just not going to work or people won't have the money to invest in these false representations of real money. Yeah, we're going to see. We're going to see how this really works out. So I'll be talking about the new training and stuff that's coming up. And I need to send out emails to the students and let them know what's going on first before I start announcing it on YouTube. So just be patient. November is going to be a very interesting month. Very interesting.